Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another YouTube video on the Capture the Flag competition held by Google just this past weekend. I'm um, still going over some of the beginner's quest challenges, and in this one, I want to showcase Floppy 2. So I didn't solve this actually during the competition because I'm not that good, I'm a noob, but um, after reading through some write-ups, I did want to showcase what a solution I found was, and some that I think other people got to work as well. So this uh, carries off of the Floppy challenge originally that we have everything for, um, it's in our folder created specifically for the competition, GCTF for Google CTF, and in our floppy complete thing, we were able to actually extract some files out of the icon that it had previously, um, and in that extracted folder, we had the driver.txt, which had the flag for the original challenge, floppy1, really, and we had another file uh, www.com. And we never got a chance to take a look at this, but this is the prompt for Floppy 2. Looks like you found a way to open the file on the Floppy, but that www.com file looks suspicious. So there's an interesting note here because the driver.txt file has this string, in case of emergency, run www.com. But www.com looks like nothing, really. It just looks like there's some junk in here. Um... The Fubonizer 9000 is no longer on the off-hub DMZ, but I don't know what all this stuff is. However, in the context of run, it's got to be some kind of executable, maybe, or like a program. So some people may be getting ahead of me, um, but the com file extension is a lot like command.com for old, like the older version of cmd.exe or the command prompt that you've seen in Windows. So it is a executable file, kind of based off of DOS and old school Microsoft DOS. So I wanted to figure out how we can run this and I figured, well, I'll look at DOSBox. Um, if you don't have DOSBox installed, if you're on Linux, you can just sudo apt get or sudo apt install DOSBox. Um, again, only if apt or aptitude is your package manager. If you're on, on, on Ubuntu, it should be. So you can run DOSBox after you've installed it. And now we can start to actually poke at this uh, computer program, or this www.com file. I don't know if I can increase this text size. Uh, I really wish I could. I have no idea. Okay, we're going to work with it. So if I wanted to get, because right now I'm in the Z drive, as you can see, so I can DIR, and there's some stuff in here, but it's not what we're expecting. Um, we want to be in the current directory that we're working in our terminal, so we have to mount a different drive to the current directory we're in, so just a period. It'll say mount C is mounted as local directory there, so we can switch to C colon. Now you can see I'm in the C drive, and I can DIR, and we have driver.txt, www.com, and the zip archive, blah, blah, blah. Actually, let's move this stuff to a new directory, because we do want our own floppy2 directory. Before I get ahead of myself, floppy complete, the extracted stuff, www.com. Let's bring it here. Good. So now I can DOSBox, and again, mount C to where I am, switch to the C drive, DIR, we've got www.com. So if I run this, just typing in the executable name, it doesn't do anything seemingly otherwise, or other than just the Fubonizer 9000 is no longer on the off of DMZ. So we'll just print that string that we saw in the file. Not very helpful. No flag printed out for us. Um, so I wanted to see how else can we do this, and... Again, I didn't do this during the actual competition because I didn't really know what I was looking at. Um, but some, after reading some write-ups, which you should totally do, check them out on CTF time, um, the smarter idea is to try and debug this program or see what it's doing or see if we can like look at what it does in memory, stuff like that. So you can normally run DOSBox, and if you have it compiled with the debug mode enabled, you can press Alt and the Pause key, or Alt-Pause, um, I had to. I have to hit a function key on my keyboard, and maybe that's screwing stuff up. But otherwise, it's not opening on my computer. I don't have it compiled like that. Um, I tried to do it, and we can start to go down that track. But I just want to show you, I wasn't able to get it successfully, and maybe you will have some better ideas or explanation as to why my compile wouldn't work. Um, but let's let's try that. DOS box compile from source, and if you're looking through all the stuff, you'll be able to see, I think it was like Vogos. Let's just get to DOSBox. 
DOS box here. There's a download. Am I looking at the right thing? Jeez. Yeah, okay. So the source is here, which you can get on SourceForge. Fogos compile debug DOS box. We can over some of these. There are other threads that talk about this, but the creator on this forum here, which looks to be like official thing for DOSBox, I think. I honestly can't tell, but the creator is in here. Um, and we can download the source code. Let's try this. I'm going to put this in opt, because that's where I put most of my stuff. And I think I already have a directory already set. So just for DOSBox. Do it. Do what I say. Just for continuity shake to, to, to show you, I'm going to remove that directory and do it all from scratch. So um, let's make directory opt DOSBox. And I will need to sudo that because opt is not usually a place we can write into. So I want to actually change the ownership of that to me. Cool. So now we should be able to write in that stuff. And we had a download link here over at SourceForge. Can I please get that one more time? Cool. So once we've got the source, CD opt DOSBox, I can gunzip this tar xvf to extract that bundle here. And if you actually check out the install directions, you can see these are some dependencies that you may need. Um, I needed to install uh, SDL config. And if you type SDL hyphen config, if you don't have it already installed, it'll recommend something for you in bash. And I also needed to install like lib and curses five dev or something. Um, Cause I needed that supposedly. But even after I installed some of those dependencies, I think I'm missing some of these optional ones, but I would think it would still be able to work regardless. It says, if you're building on Linux systems, you can just run configure and make like you would normally for compiling from source. And you can enable debug if you wanted to actually run that. Um, so let's try that. Let's try config. And I'm going to do enable debug. Let's set heavy on. Maybe that will work. Who knows? Configure worked just fine for me after I got those dependencies done. But after I tried to make, I get all these errors. And I'm too noobish and <laughs> afraid of these C compile errors to actually take a look at them. So I didn't get it to compile. I didn't get it to build or work for me. Um, so I moved on from this. So I went back to my GCTF floppy2 directory and figured, well, I could probably just download like debug.com and run it through DOSBox because the, the debugger is like a DOS program. Um, debug and enhanced debug looked like it was a package that actually had it as sketchy as it was to be downloading off softpedia i don't know if i can actually is that is that like a sketchy place to download things from i don't know but i got this zip archive um let's put it in our gctf folder for this challenge and we can unzip that so now we've got debug.com and debugx.com. So let's get DOSBox going. And I'll mount C to this directory, and I'll run it debug after I switch to that drive. Now we can run debug, debug.com. So we're given this hyphen here, and that's just the prompt to denote, okay, we're waiting for standard input. Use a question mark. I tried to poke around with, like, help and other things to actually get me some help commands, but the question mark seemed to be the one that worked. And it listed out some things we can do here. If you wanted to, you can check it out. Debug command bug.com command help, maybe. And I was able to find this document page that at least got into a little bit more description and explanation of what these commands were doing, but I wanted to see if I could dump some of the memory after it had ran this program. So I wanted to see 
this dump. I'll zoom in here. Looked like D was the little command to do it, and you can see here in the DOS box explanation, they have the thing that you're trying to do, like the function you want to run, essentially, and the command to do it. It's just a letter with arguments you can pass to it. So if I wanted to run um, www.com, it looked like we could hit like go or proceed, either of the two, and it will run them. So let's try and quit out of this debug.com with www.com. If I were to hit G to go, it runs. Okay, so now if I hit D to dump, I'm not getting a whole lot, but I can actually probably dump more. I didn't specify a range here, but I can dump again, and we'll start to move through some of the, some of the memory that happened or, or that actually went through and was executed with the www.com. So in this block of nonsense, you can see the hex on the middle and the ASCII on the right, just like you're used to for a hex dump. And in this mess, I see a flag format just kind of on the very, very bottom here. CTF, good old DOS for the win. Um, let's take note of that. Our terminal here. Nano flag.txt, CTF, and G00D. FTW. Cool. Let's cat that. Give it to XClip so we've got it in our clipboard. Nice. And let's try and submit that and see if it will take that flag. Nice. It did it. Just like that. Floppy 2 is done. So honestly, I was kind of moving around in the dark here because I didn't know a whole lot about DOS. Um, and this debugger especially. If we were to give it arguments, maybe, or the range of things for it to actually dump, maybe we could get more out of this, or not. Uh, I couldn't really tell, because it looked like it took it as an address up there when I ran it previously. Um, it was going 0, 100. Unsure. But figured I could show you, um, and maybe you as a viewer will probably have a little bit more understanding or be able to help me out with why I can't compile DOSBox from source. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you're enjoying some of these videos, just showcasing how I'm getting some solutions and walking through some write-ups. Um, but you should totally check them out yourself on ctftime.org. Thanks for watching. Uh, hey, if you do like these videos, please do press that like button. Let me leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and subscribe if you're willing. If See you soon.